If you're thinking about relocating to Salem, Oregon, you're going to want to stay tuned for this video because we're going to be talking about everything that you need to know before you relocate here. We're going to talk about the geography, the weather, the cost of living, employment, education, and we're going to end with my personal favorite things to do in Salem. Just like you, I relocated to Salem and unfortunately, I really fudged up when I relocated here. I thought I had done enough research, I thought I knew what I needed to know, but I didn't and my husband and I ended up purchasing a house in the wrong part of town. Now I can almost guarantee you that you're likely to make the same mistake that I did, but don't worry, I am here to provide you with education and information so that you can actually avoid making the mistakes that I did. Stick around until the end because I'm going to give you my biggest tip about relocating if this is a process you're about to embark on. Let's jump into it. Salem is a charming city located in Marion County in Oregon. It's the state capital of Oregon and has a population of just under 200,000 residents, which means it is one of the larger cities in the state. It's known for its rich history, being surrounded by incredible natural beauty, and it used to kind of be known as the sleepy, younger, frumpier sibling of Portland. But let me tell you, Salem, Oregon is a place that you are not going to want to underestimate. It is an amazing place to live. When it comes to the climate, Salem experiences pretty darn wet winters, just like the rest of the Pacific Northwest, but our summers are dry, sunny, and so dang incredible. Throughout the entire year, you can expect that the weather is going to be between 40 degrees to 80 degrees on average. Now, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. The winters here are rough. You're going to need to prepare yourself for the wet winters that last for about six to nine months. And that's not a mistake. Our summertime, it's really only about three months long. We do have very distinct seasons here in the Pacific Northwest but we also have sun seasons. What I mean by that is in the winter time on the shortest day of the year, the sun will go down around 4.30 p.m. In the summertime, on the longest day of the year, the sun doesn't set until 9.30 p.m. If you're used to seeing the sun for the same amount of time each day and not having very distinct seasons, buckle up, baby, because here in Salem, it's a completely different ball game. One amazing thing that the winter and the rain brings is the lushness of the Willamette Valley. We are in the most beautiful area of Oregon, in my opinion anyways, and it is so dang green and lush in the summertime and the springtime. It's incredible. If you're not used to seeing greenery and trees everywhere, you're going to be awestruck by how green and lush it is here. One of the other incredible aspects of that greenery and all that rain that we have is we've got really great produce within five, 10 minutes just outside of Salem. You're gonna see a lot of farm stands, a lot of you pick farms, and so much access to fresh organic produce. So if you can handle the winters, if you can handle the rain, you are gonna be well rewarded with the summertime of Salem. We've talked about the weather, Let's now move on to the overall cost of living in Salem, Oregon. One of the big draws to Salem, Oregon is the lower cost of living. Now, you have to remember that pretty much all of Oregon is considered to be a high cost of living state, but when you compare the home prices of Portland versus Salem, Salem is significantly cheaper and you can typically get a bigger house for the same price that you would pay in Portland. For this reason, a lot of people are choosing to purchase a home in Salem, either work from home or commute into Portland. Portland is only 45 minutes north, which means you can have the best of both worlds. You can get that higher Portland salary, but have a lower cost of living down here in Salem. 
Let's talk about the employment opportunities down here in Salem. I think that this is a lesser known aspect of Salem. Even though it's the state capital, you think, you know, government jobs, but there's actually a lot more going to Salem's employment market than you would expect. Some of the larger industries here in Salem are going to focus around agricultural production, food packing, and kind of that genre. Salem also has a very robust healthcare system, which means we have a lot of employment opportunities through the Salem Hospital located in downtown. And of course, Salem is the capital of Oregon, which means that we have a lot of government agencies located in Salem, and there's a lot of government employment opportunities here. Now, while the job market in Salem is pretty robust, when you compare it to a place like Seattle or Portland, the job opportunities that are available are less than those places. But it's all about perspective, and for a city with under 200,000 people, yeah, I think the job market is pretty booming. Let's talk about the education in schools here in Salem. Now, Salem is no different than any other place we need to have good schools, right? But what you might not know is that Salem also offers private institution and higher educational opportunities. The largest uh, school district in Salem is the Kaiser Salem Public Schools, which serve over 40,000 students. This school district has 65 different schools, including elementary, middle school, and high school, along with alternative and special educational programs. Now, one kind of quirky bit here about the Salem Kaiser Public School System is that the school boundaries don't align with the city limits. Therefore, your kiddo's school may not necessarily be in the immediate area of your home. It's super important that you as a home buyer call that school and verify that your property is located within the proper school district that you are wanting. Some of the more popular private schools here in Salem are going to be the Cascade Christian School and the Salem Academy Christian Schools. If you're looking for religious or secular education, you're definitely going to find it in Salem. These private schools are also going to come with smaller class sizes, which means better and more individualized attention for your kiddo. Let's talk about higher education because this is one part that a lot of people don't actually know about Salem. So Salem is not a college town, but it does offer a decent selection for higher educational opportunities. Willamette University is one of the oldest universities on the West Coast, and it's located right here in downtown Salem. This is a liberal arts college, and it has a beautiful campus and a top-ranked law program. One of our largest community colleges is called Chemeketa, and it offers over 70 different programs, including a transfer program to a four-year university. I think surprisingly, there's a lot of educational opportunities and ways that you can educate your kiddos in the city of Salem. Not a lot of people actually know about it, so now you can count yourself one the wiser. Now let's talk about my personal favorite things to do in Salem. And let me preface this by saying I absolutely love going out and hanging out with my husband, going out with the girlfriends. I love it all. So I'm a little social butterfly when it comes to going out. And these are my top activities that I'm drawn to time and time again. In the summertime, my absolute favorite place to go walk around is gonna be the waterfront. Now, the waterfront is located in downtown Salem and is right along the Willamette River. So you're gonna see the water, you're gonna see kayakers, paddle boarders, sometimes people bring out their sea dews and the park is filled with green grass, little play structures, a splash pad, and just a really, really wonderful, tranquil place to walk if you're downtown. Uh, side note, if you really enjoy carousels, we actually have a carousel on our waterfront and is definitely worth a visit, whether it's in the summertime or the wintertime. It's enclosed, so you don't have to worry about the rain if you are checking out Salem in the winter. My next favorite place is going to be Coin Jam. This is an arcade with a lot of old and new video games. Or, I guess they're actually arcade games. <laughs> my favorite thing to do with my husband is go play pinball. And let me tell you, I am a damn shark. I know nothing about strategy around pinball, but I love it. And I guess, I don't know. The 
odds are in my favor. I'm not sure why I always beat my husband, but <laughs> I do. Coin Jam is open to all ages up until a certain time of day. I'm sorry, I don't really know what time of day that is, but I do know in the evening time it becomes like a bar and it's 21 and over. They've got great food there. I recommend getting a scotch egg and then go in to play some pinball. Don't worry about bringing your own quarters because they have a quarter machine there. All right, last thing on my most favoritest of things to do in Salem is actually going to Kaiser, which is north of Salem by just like two minutes, and going to the Willamette Mission State Park. This is my favorite park to walk my dog. My husband and I are there almost every single day of the week, and we absolutely love it. In the wintertime, it is muddy, but they do have cement paved paths, so as long as you're sticking on the cement, you won't get too muddy. If you have a dog, your dog is absolutely going to love it there. They have an off-leash area, and they even have horse trails. So if you're somebody who has a horse, bring that horse out to the park, and you can walk in nature in this incredible park. One kind of quirky thing about this park is there's actually a ferry that crosses the Willamette River, and it starts in this park. So the park is situated along the Willamette River. And if you want to get to the other side, you take this thing called the Wheatland Ferry, you drive your car onto it. I think only six cars can go on it at any one time. And voila, you will cross the Willamette River on a ferry. It's hilarious and terrifying and incredibly fun. Now, the biggest tip that I wish somebody had told me before I relocated to Salem is the fact that each neighborhood in Salem is so incredibly unique. Your experience of Salem and the reality and lifestyle that you inhabit is going to be directly correlated to what neighborhood you decide to buy in. I didn't realize it would be a big deal, and like I said before, I ended up picking the wrong spot. So do your due diligence, drive around that neighborhood, get out and walk, and really get a vibe check. I relocated to Salem. I made all of the mistakes that you can make, and I want to help you avoid making those same mistakes. Once I became a real estate agent, I started working with people who are relocating just like you, and I discovered that my story and my experiences, they were not unique to me. So now I help people who are watching these exact same videos relocate to Salem successfully, and we want to help you too. You're gonna find our email address is popping up on the screen right now. Please reach out to us if you're relocating here. We would be absolutely thrilled to help you purchase a home in Salem. Bye friends.